Okay, so I told you my story about Sidhu, and it really starts really when I was 13, when I was given my first diagnosis. Um, it's, it was depression and uh, slightly psychotic features. My second one was at Stanford, and they said that it was behavioral. Then some other guy, I don't even think it was a psychiatrist, uh, I think it was a general surgeon, I don't remember his exact profession. He said he felt that it was temporal lobe seizure and agreed with my parents on that point. And that's what the impression they gave to the boot camp before I was sent there. And they wouldn't have sent me there if the boot camp didn't agree. But the boot camp wanted to make me think like the white man. That's the part that my parents, they kind of suspected it, but they didn't truly understand that they're wrong. And they're wrong to agree with the status quo. And they're wrong to you know, put me at the mercy of the minions of the power elites to force me to think like a good servant to the power elites who believe that they are gods and that their DNA makes them superior. That's why the genetic basis of mental disorders comes from Franz Kalman who studied under the Nazi guys you know, before World War I started, before we knew them as Nazis. Now, that's, that's another thing. Nazism didn't just come out of nowhere. It's the German way of thinking, the popular... Uh, the popular way of the power elite to think, you know, during the time and, and the secret societies, you know, it was the popular Germanic school of thought, so to speak, during the time, and it, ro it rose over a couple, a couple hundred years, you know. There was evidence of Nazism, you know, in, in the 1800s in Germany. Now, <clears throat> what you've got to understand is when you have a reform school, which is really a camp, for you to reform, and you have a Nazi-style um, death camp, and you have to understand the nuances between those and you know the the internment camps we sent the Japanese. These are all given to you by the white power structure. Why they why they're doing the little, their little infighting? That's what it really is. Just like the mafia godfathers fight with each other sometimes, then they go back to being one big happy, you know, commission is what they used to call it. Um, where they all work together. It's the same thing in, in you know, in the politics of the power elite. But anyway, going back to my story, you know, they set the basically they set the foundation for when I got in trouble with the law later for an argument I had with my girlfriend that blew out of proportion. Um, what basically happened was that the court system and the and the psychiatrist that worked at the prisons at the county jail they took the same side as the psychiatrist this Jewish psychiatrist that I was seeing you know and they all going 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 with the past history given to me by a bunch of Nazis and a bunch of people who really don't know me we are going off a few questions that really didn't cover anything and going off the testimony of my parents who didn't know me either they're way out of touch my dad works 16 hours a day my mom's like a crippled old white lady who just didn't know her son very well you know she was very brainwashed by the system very brainwashed by it she, she knows that there's conspiracies but she doesn't understand it's not small conspiracies by certain people. It's a massive conspiracy by the power elite. She doesn't really grasp that truly. And so, since she doesn't grasp that, she doesn't understand what's going on with me. And that's caused problems all my life, is I've tried to plead with them to see the truth. I used to, I used to stack like 10 valid sources every day on the kitchen counter for them to read. They wouldn't touch them. You know, 10 of them a day. So growing up, you know, living in their household, and, and always trying to reason with them and show them the opposition view, you know, created resentment from them. They felt like, oh, we're the experts, because both my parents are doctors, and they felt like you should automatically concede our, our view. And so, you know, you know, which is contrary to what the psychiatrist would tell me, you know, the few truthful things they were telling me were things like, oh, the patient knows best, and things like this. Yeah, I know best. I'm not exhibiting those symptoms. You guys don't know what you're talking about. But, you know, that was ignored. They sent me to the reform school. I fought back. They sent me to the boot camp. I went through the motions of committing suicide, so I got sent to yet another psych institution. Uh, so I've been to psych institutions in Fremont, California, in uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Um, I've been to reform school in uh, San Bernardino. Um, during my stay in the prison, um, I talked to psychiatrists there. I've talked to many different psychiatrists, especially when it comes to my diagnosis. So I, I'm looking at it from, you know, 
a researcher's perspective as well as somebody who's been there and been through the system. But no, it didn't bias me against it because if the system would have helped me, I would have adopted the system. But the system, by nature, is harmful for the future of the black man. It's like putting a band-aid on a shotgun wound and denying what the shotgun wound is. You know, let's just drug them through it and let the white man remain in power. No, no, no. The answer is not to be drugged up and let the Nazi sympathizers remain in power.